Grace and peace be unto you. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came on our behalf, who died on the cross for our sins, who resurrected so that we may accept salvation. And most important, he sits at the right hand of the Father, knowing that one day he will come back and gather his people so that we may be with him to the end. I am so excited about this day. And you're wondering, why are you so excited? For today is the first day that we will mark as our first sermon on online ministry. And you might be wondering, what is online ministry? Quite simple. We will have preaching and teaching of the biblical content and also occasionally we will have others come in and have conversations about topic that all of us face each and every day. And the idea of having these conversations is so that we as Christians and unbelievers can have a connection with God that we can grow closer and closer to him. So I am so excited about this new ministry. And if you like it, just share it. I'm not asking you to subscribe, but just share what you learn in this sermon. So let's at this time go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. We thank you for this ministry that you have bestowed upon this earth. And we ask that we all hear and see and understand through this word of God. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for how you continue to bless us. And we ask all of these things in your son, Jesus the Christ, and all of God's children said amen. Well, as you know, the holidays have ended. And I hope that some of you, that your Christmas trees have been put away. Uh, and some of the episodes that we see as, as far as TV, like Charlie Brown's Christmas, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, Santa Claus is coming to town, has to wait another year before coming on the air. And here's the big one. Oh, my goodness. I'm, this one really makes me a little uneasy. Eggnog is no longer in the grocery store. Did you get that? Eggnog is no longer in the grocery store. And we have to wait another year before we can get eggnog. On top of that, children and youth are now going back to school or about to go to school in remote learning or sometimes physical learning. And adults, parents, we know our job picks up right back where it left off. And as Dottie Parton says, we working at nine to five. <laughs> That's right. And if you hadn't known, New York just dropped the ball with the ball falling down on New Year's Eve, approaching the new year that we see. And so we see all of these changes happening that welcomed in 2022. 2021 was just like 2020 for most of us, where we found ourselves in this kind of uneasy atmosphere, gun violence around the world, even in schools. And we're wondering, what's next? And we're hoping that 2022 will be much different from the previous two years. We're hoping that 2022 will show a positive light where the main concern of this nation won't be whether or not to wear masks or what vaccine should I take, where 2022 would be in more in a positive light. Usually, and I mean usually around the beginning of a new year, we tend to have, we make these New Year's resolution. You know about those. New Year's resolution where we make a commitment to make changes or adjustments in our lives so that we can be better off. You know, that New Year's resolution you make from uh, 
exercising, losing more weight, whether or not I'm going to be a vegan or a vegetarian, no matter what it is, we make these New Year's resolution so that we can make improvement in our lives. And one of the most important questions that come to my mind when, like many of you today, is what is my calling in life? Especially when we get around the new year. This question seems to come around, especially entering the new year and the circumstance we find ourselves in. The calling question usually pops up in a time of reflection has transpired when a period didn't go as well or the path that we are traveling doesn't seem to work out the way we thought it would. The calling is both the question and the answer that everyone should know individually. What is my calling? What is your calling? Well, we're going to dive into a text that will help guide this conversation about what is my calling? And I and as many series that we'll be going for the next two uh, sermons and the question that we ask every year usually is where am I going? So let's look at the text for today. It comes from Genesis, the 12th chapter, and I'll be starting at verse number one and concluding at verse number five. Let's look at it in your Bibles. Genesis, the 12th chapter, starting at verse number one, all the way to verse number five. And it reads, now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kinfolk and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curse you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarah, and his brother's son, Lot, and all of the possession that they had gathered and the persons from they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. And from this biblical content, I would like to ask the question, where am I going? When someone is when someone knows their calling, it should give a sense of focus, determination, a sense of peace for a path that needs to be taken. And now I, I, I want to make clear that when I say your calling, I am referring to God's calling for your life. For God is one that he is the one who is orchestrating the whole ordeal. There's nothing that God is not orchestrating when it comes down to your calling. Now, there is a difference, as we know, between our calling and God's calling, especially when it deals with our lives. Now, I can remember when I was in college, I, I, I was going to graduate at Bavaria College as a musician. Ever since I was eight years old, I had been playing the piano. I had been uh, directing choirs. I had even been directing musicians. I played a different 
the events from jazz ensembles, uh, church service, banquets, conferences. I, I learned to even play the piano by reading music. And here's a secret. Playing the piano by music, I learned from a little old white woman. Her name was Miss Calhoun. Now, now you have to understand about Miss Calhoun. She was from that old school. She expected you to, to, to learn how to read by what was on the pages. Don't emphasize. Don't try to ad lib or anything like that. Stay strictly what is on the paper. And so for five years, I learned from Miss Calhoun how to read music. Every time our weekly practices and our annual recitals, I learned this from Miss Calhoun, how to be patient, how to be persistent and not try to take the easy way out. And after five years learning after Miss Calhoun, I learned from one of the baddest musicians I ever known. He's taught me how to play the piano by ear. So after learning the basis of music on the piano, I started to pick up the tuba. And playing the tuba, I started winning competitions statewide. And I found myself, by winning state on the tuba, I found myself to actually traveling on a tour over in Europe. And boy, I was good. You couldn't tell me nothing. For my plan was that when I graduate from college, at before I college, my plan was to graduate from there, move over to Europe, join a symphony band over there and be one of the baddest tuba players they ever did see. That was my plan. Before I even got to that point in my life, while here in the state, one of the things that I picked up was I had a love for theater. So I learned how to write scripts, learned how to direct plays, learned how to perform in the plays. Matter of fact, I was doing that so well that people were calling me the next Tyler Perry. Did you get that? The next Tyler Perry. I was doing good. But little did I know, with all of those accomplishments, with all of the hard work that I was putting in, I felt and I somewhat knew that being a musician was my calling. Little did I know that that was not the calling for God for my life. I even had the mindset of thinking, well, after I finish all of this in my life, I even will move to Atlanta, Florida. And it was like God had this interrupting spirit that directed me from my calling to his calling. So we're looking at Abram, son of Terah, husband of Sarah. And God says, leave. Hmm. The Lord told Abram, like, you got to go, bro. You got to go. And what a call for, for God to tell Abram to make this move, especially when Abram was in a comfortable spot, a comfortable lifestyle. He was doing good. For, for if you don't know anything about Abram, let, let, me, let me give you a little background so you'll know the lowdown. Abram had moved with his father Terah from Ur to move all the way to Canaan. But in that transition, they found themselves making a pit stop in Haran. Now there, that's where Terah died. Now, here's a little thing that you need to know about Terah. Terah, not only being Abram's father, he was a person 
who had a good income. And what you mean by good income? I'm glad you asked. Tara made items that we call idols for to sell to people so that they would buy them and worship them as their own God. So the lifestyle of Tara and his family, Abram, Lot, and Sarah, was very un was very comfortable. They were living a life. It, it was to a point where the place that they dwell in in Haran was a place where they made some more of their of their possessions. More things came about by the lifestyle that they live. Now, Terah has passed away, leaving Abram head of the house. Now, with this profession that Tara had, one would think that Abram would know a little bit about the skills. And so it raised me to this point. Like I was a musician and like I knew, I thought that being a musician would be my number one calling. Come to find out that that was only tools that would help me advance in the calling of God. So what I would emphasize to you this today would be, yes, you may have accomplished a lot of things in life and feel like it is your calling, and it could be, but if it's not the calling, all of the accomplishments that God has, has, has orchestrated in your life does not mean it was, it was not worth it. It could mean it needs to be or it is a tool that will one day be the thing that helps you in the calling of Christ. So Abram is in Haran with his wife and his nephew Lot. And God calls him. My wife um, gets on me all the time about answering my phone. <laughs> she asks me this one question. She says, uh, where's your phone? And by her asking that question, it always comes to mind. She's asking that question because I missed her, missed her call. And I miss her call because my phone is nowhere near me. And by this example, I would like to ask, ask the question of how many calls have you missed from God? And my wife has a, a way of spinning it. When she asks me the question, where's your phone? She always have a comment of saying, I could have been on side of the road and you wouldn't even know. So how many calls have we missed from God? Especially in this day and time with the pandemic happening like it is. How many calls have we missed from God where he is strictly and intentionally saying what? He is calling us to do. And so we see Abram. Getting this call from God. And one would say. Well. We sing about Father Abraham. Had many sons. We know the song. And with that song. We would say that. Surely Abram. Would not miss this call. From God. One would say that. But let's look and see what the passage says. Now the Lord said to Abram. Go from your country. And your kinfolk. And your father's house. To the land that I will show you. Skipping down to verse number four. So Abram went. As the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old. When he departed from Haran, 
Abram took his wife Sarah and his brother's sons Lot and all of the possession that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. Hold up, hold up. Now, the Lord told Abram to leave and then he said leave everything but Abram doesn't do that. He takes his wife, his nephew, and everything he accumulated in that land. Don't seem like he left anything. So he really didn't miss the call. But he, he did what I would say, what my wife get on me also about. And I don't think it's no uh, intentionally directed towards me. One of the things that you would know about with your cell phone if someone was to call you, you get two options, sometimes three. You have answer the call, miss the call on purpose, or ig, ig the call. And that means ignore the call. And in those options, you have the option of picking one of those three things. And most of the time, we individual, when we don't want to talk to an individual, or we don't feel like talking at that moment, we ignore the call. And man, this is one of the things that really upsets my wife. when She knows that when she had called someone and it rings for two times and then it goes right to the voicemail. Oh my goodness. They just ignored my call. That raised the question, how many times have we ignored God's call? And I would say today that that Abram at this moment he didn't miss the call but I think he ignored parts of the call you see he did leave but he ignored the portion the part of God's command of saying hey I want you to leave everything from your father's house your kinfolk and all of your possession. Mm -mm. Abraham, I see and in this text that he took everything so that even though he was leaving, he would be comfortable. How many times have we found ourselves being not leaving anything because we want to feel comfortable in the space? Well, this is the situation that Abraham found himself. And it says right here. That he took everything with him that he had accumulated in Haran. Now, you might be wondering, so how would I know that God is calling me and has placed a calling in my life? And that is a great question. And I would like to share with you some ways of how to connect with God's calling in your life. Now, what I'm about to share with you, I'm not saying it's the absolute answer. But through experiencing in my life and having conversation with loved ones through their experience, there are some similarities to my story with their story. And the first one right here, God usually when calling us for his calling is for us to leave something. Sometimes leaving something like a situation, a relationship, or a mindset. Now, I want to put this as a disclaimer. I am not endorsing divorce from marriage but i am sharing that god usually wants us to leave things that makes the individual comfortable or uncomfortable in some parts and i would say that god shares that we need to leave anything that draws our attention from him now this intention that draws you 
can be either good or even bad. And here's how you know if something or someone has the potential to draw your attention from God. And I learned this from my father and he made it quite simple for me. And I, I, I want to say this to you. So so I want I want to look directly into the camera on this. He would say, if you have someone or something in your life and it was just suddenly taken out of your life, would that bother you to a point? That you could not do without. Now if the answer is. I could do without. Then it doesn't have your most undivided attention. It's not grabbing your attention from God. But if the answer is yes. Then. I would say. It has the potential or has. Or showing the potential. Of drawing your attention from God and God like I know does not want anything to draw our attention from him so he gives the command of you need to leave it get rid of it good or bad if it's a good situation Sometimes God intervenes. If it means something like a car or a house or money or anything materialistic that draws my attention from God for me not seeing who God truly is or makes me want to connect and better this relationship with him. If it takes that away, then he wants me to leave it. And on the other hand, if it takes my attention away from him, if it's a bad situation, if it's a toxic relationship, if it's something that's going on in my life that is not good for me, but it is drawing me away from God, God still wants me to leave it. So the first command that God gives Abram is leave. So write that down, write that down, that. One good indication to know your calling for God. I would suggest to you is that there's going to have to be something that has to be left behind because you can't take what you are so used to, what you are so comfortable with and take it with you, especially if it makes you feel in that way without depending on God. So the first command to know what you're calling, something is going to have to be left. The second one, I would say, like it says in the text, he tells Abram to leave and then he says, go. Now, 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 when I heard, when I was reading this scripture and I read that he said, leave Abram, everything mostly, and then go. The first question that came to mind, like I think could, I would suggest with uh, Abram would be thinking is go where? Because, you know, one thing that I, I, I don't like to do is not knowing where I'm going, especially if someone tells me to go. Uh, that, 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 don't, that, don't, that, that don't seem comfortable for me. I mean, so, so like if I'm asked to go somewhere, I don't have to know all the details, but I would let you know that I, I still would have to know in what area is where I need to go. It's going to be found. And and in this text, God tells Abram to leave and he tells him to go. Go where? And this is the question that we ask, that especially when we were trying to find out where am I going? If we leave in some one situation that we found ourselves a little comfortable or not comfortable, whatever it may be, whatever that circumstance may be, we want to know exactly where we're going. And here is the answer. If you're wondering, especially when you're dealing with God's calling in your life, here it is. I want you to take this down wherever I direct you declares the Lord. Whoa, 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 whoa. There it is right there. Let me, let me say that again. 
Where am I going? Wherever I direct you to. So, 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 so you telling me I'm supposed to leave where, whatever you tell me to leave and then go wherever you telling me to go, but I don't have all the details. Yep, that's right. That's what God is asking. Because, see, when you are going with God, you are depending and trusting that wherever he is leading you to on this journey is in the right direction. Let me say that again. You are saying that wherever I am leaving and being directed by God, that is where I'm supposed to be. You don't have to know all the details. And I know that sometimes may make us a little bit uncomfortable and it may sometimes make us a little bit uneasy. But but God does this because it's a trust issue right here. So. So here's the best way I can explain this before I go. And I want to, I want to use this as an example. My mama calls me and tells me, hey, Lamar, uh, could you come down to Walmart in Hendersonville. Now, little did I know, there are a lot of Walmarts in Hendersonville. I think there's like two or three of them, but I only knew about one of them. And the one that I was talking about wasn't the one she was referring to. And she said, come to Walmart. I need some assistant with this uh, TV that I purchased, and I need you to bring your truck over, pick it up, and bring it home. Now, I'm saying, now there's two or three Walmarts in Hendersonville. How do I know which uh, Walmart that you are at? She said this. I want you to get this. The Walmart that I'm referring to is right beside the McDonald's close to downtown. Now, she didn't give me the detail of how to get to the Walmart that she was referring to. But she directed me in the right direction. Oh, I, I'm, I hope you didn't miss that. I hope you didn't miss. She didn't give me all the details to the Walmart, but she pointed me in the right direction of where I needed to go. So when I did was that even though I didn't have all of the details, only thing I needed to do was just get in the car, drive in the proximity where she had directed me by, by the McDonald's that's close to the main street in that area. And by golly, when I did that, I found the Walmart. That's how I see this, this text folding out. Abram didn't have all the details of what he was going to do while he left and was going to the area. But Abram had some approximately where he was going to be heading to. See, when he was with his father, Tara, the idea was that he was going to be leaving Ur and going to Canaan. And then by leaving Ur and going to Canaan on their journey, they had to make a pit stop, like I said early. And when they met at Hera, they stayed there and Tara died. But it didn't mean that the journey had to end. Abram was told to leave everything that he was in in Haran and go and continue to Canaan. So even though he didn't know the whole detail of where he was going, he knew the proximity of where he was going because it was all in God's orchestrated plan. So what I'm telling you, if you are wondering, where am I going? Here's the first thing you say. First thing you need to know is that we need to start seeing what we need to leave behind. And in the process of leaving those things behind, we need to be directed and connected with God to see where we are going. And going means that I continue to pray with God. Uh, that means in, in constant communication with him. What that means, I continue to study his word so that I will make sure that the, the guidelines and the, and the blueprint is put in front of my face so that I know exactly where I'm going. So you can't understand the whole map and the instruction if you don't know the author who created the, the, the map itself. So what I'm trying to say this, this day is that when you are asking the question, 
Where am I going? One thing I would say, leave something that is taking your attention away from God. And second, go where God is directing you. Amen.